All right, this is Understanding Sue Storm, part two. I didn't get everything out I wanted to get out in the first Sue video, so I want to add to it. Sue is... So, the key to understanding the Fantastic Four, one of the keys to understanding the Fantastic Four is that they're mostly broken people. Um, Sue is broken from too much is expected of her, and uh, at far too young an age, but she pulls through, and she's amazing. She ends up being the heart of the team, which, if Ben wasn't dealing with all of his physical issues from becoming the Thing, he had always played that role in their dynamic before becoming the Fantastic Four. Ben was the one everybody could rely on, he was more of a father figure or an uncle figure, he was the guy who had it all together. Sue has to step up into that role, and she's not ready for it at the beginning of the movie. At the beginning of the movie, they've already been through the cosmic accident that grants them their powers, and Sue wants nothing to do with it. She has always believed she wanted a normal life, which is not true, but most of us believe we want things that we don't actually want. Um... Right. Sue has felt like she's never lived a normal life. She's um, Her childhood was taken away from her when her father killed a man and went to prison and then asked her to tell Johnny, to raise Johnny, and uh, to tell Johnny that he was dead. Tell everybody that he was dead. Um, yeah. So she's been, ever since then, even before then, she was... <sighs> A fish out of water, brilliant student, a few grades ahead of everybody, very smart, becoming a doctor and a surgeon, probably a cardiologist. Um, this is the character. This is my take on the character. This isn't... It's interspliced with stuff from the comics. What this also gives Sue is it makes her one of the key characters to the Fantastic Four. Because when they're dealing with enemies, both Ben and Reed are military men. Reed was a secret agent, Ben is a uh, marine fighter pilot. When they see an enemy, they get it. They, they go, kill, get it out of the way, remove the obstacle. There's an obstacle, remove the obstacle. Their first thought is take them on, defeat them, knock them out. Sue is a doctor. Sue has taken the Hippocratic, Hippocratic Oath. Not the Hippocratic Oath. That's an entirely different oath. <laughs> And the uh, first part of the Hippocratic Oath is do no harm. So whenever Sue walks into a situation like dealing with, whether it's Doom or Mole Man or the Skrulls, she's looking for a nonviolent solution. She is looking for a way to figure out what their problem is, what the enemy's motivation is, and uh, find a solution for that. Find a way for them to get what they need without violence. Find a compromise. So, one of the ongoing things throughout the films should be Reed's inability to see this. Um, which kind of... Like, I want their marriage to be a, a solid marriage. Um, something that we can showcase a good marriage like Morticia. And, uh... Wow, why can't I... Gomez. Morticia and Gomez Adams. Um... If you go back and watch The Addams Family from the uh, black and white TV show, and even the, the movies get it pretty much right. One of the things about The Addams Family is that they're so different than everyone else. They needed to give them a touchstone of um, that the rest of America, the non-freaks, which is most of us, um, not necessarily including myself in that, but the rest of the the rest of America, the non freaks, needed something to identify with with the Adams family, and the love and uh, relationship between Gomez and Morticia is one of those things, and I think that should also be a touchstone, a cornerstone for Reed and Sue. In the Fantastic Four, they are definitely they love each other. They clearly love each other, and even when they argue, except for this first argument in the first movie, even when they argue, it's talking it out. It's not uh... <sighs> yeah, it's not fighting. It's not going immediately to separation like 
what Sue does in the first movie, separating from Reed, before the first movie, would be an extreme sort of thing. It's She doesn't know how to deal with this. It's a brand new thing. And Johnny, her son slash, he's not really her son, but he raised her. She raised him. So her kid, the, the her brother, but also he's not just her brother. He, she's the mom in the relationship. He doesn't want her to be the mom. She doesn't want to be the mom. Somebody has to be the mom. And it's not going to be Johnny. He needs to be raised. So Johnny chooses to, chooses to stay with Reed. Johnny loves his powers. Johnny wants desperately to be a superhero, and that drives a wedge between Sue and Johnny. So the person who's going to be the new heart of the family, Sue, who's not there yet, so the old heart is Ben. Ben is the... Uh, he's the one who's got his head on his shoulder. He went through a lot of trauma growing up before he moved in with his uncle and, and his aunt, Aunt Petunia. I'm Aunt Petunia's favorite nephew. Um... He went through a lot of trauma, and then living with his aunt and uncle helped him to deal with a lot of that. His emotional wounds, if you want to use that term. Um, because he's dealt with that, he is more centered than the rest of the team. So he's the one who everybody relies on when their... Whatever coping mechanism they use to deal with things is gone. Like Reed just... <laughs> he doesn't deal with it. Reed doesn't deal with anything. He just takes whatever the emotional issue is and he pushes it down. So he breaks. When Sue leaves, Reed breaks. He doesn't know. He doesn't understand. The song I would use for Reed to describe him is, uh, it's an Alabama song. It's, uh, there's no way I could make it without you. There's no way that I'd even try. If I had to survive without you in my life, you know I wouldn't last a day. Oh, baby, there's no way. So that's Reed. With Sue, she has to overcome this initial, like her first arc is accepting the fact that it's not necessarily accepting the fact that what she thinks she wants isn't what she really wants, but that she's not a freak, that she has an opportunity here to do good, that um, there's more to these powers and being a superhero and super adventurer than just bashing in enemies' heads. And she's a part of the great adventure. She's always been an adventurous person. She loves the adventure, and getting a taste of that really starts building her arc back to, you know what, I've been trying not to learn these powers, I, I wanted to distance myself, I wanted nothing to do with it, and now that I have a taste of it, I want to be a part of it. The first time she uses her force field should be a reflex, like she's not expecting it, she's just cringing away from danger or something like that. And the force field comes up and she's, this is cool. She starts really getting a kick out of her powers, the same way you see Johnny doing all the time. Her and Johnny have very similar personalities. Um, he's just been, he's the only one of the four that's actually had a chance to have a real childhood, um, to really just be loved and grow up in a loving environment, despite the fact of everything else going on. Johnny is, he's got three people in his life who have done everything they could to make sure he was okay. So he's pretty okay. They're pretty amazing people who are taking care of him. So Sue, Sue is the heart of the team. She's the one who, she becomes the heart of the team. She's the one who's looking for nonviolent solutions to uh, find out what, the, what their opponent wants and see if there's a way they can help them out in getting it. Uh, the Mole Man is a classic example here in the comic books. Um, Mole Man is so ugly. He's a brilliant, brilliant, highly athletic man who is so incredibly ugly. He's never had a friend in his life. And he ended up going underground, literally, looking, f trying to distance himself, becoming a hermit, leaving, you know, humanity behind. This brilliant, scientific genius um, athlete who's just an ugly, ugly cuss. And because of that ugliness, he's never had a friend. And it is Sue who figures out, we should be this guy's friend. And it takes 30 years of comic books, but he 
The person who becomes the Mole Man's friend, probably the Mole Man's best friend, is Ben Grimm in the comics. Probably his only friend. And that's how they end up not defeating him in battle, but eliminating him at, right around issue 300. The Mole Man's not a villain anymore. He's never... He's always been a villain, but he's been a villain because he's wanted to be accepted by society or get his revenge on society because he wasn't accepted. And once he gets accepted, all of his, uh, his that's his motivation. He's achieved his motivation. He no longer needs to be a villain. He no longer needs to be embattled with society because he is now part of society. And it's Sue who leads them to understanding that. It's Sue who's got a positive relationship with Namor. Doom is probably the only villain that Sue doesn't try and empathize with. Because Doom is nuts. Wonderfully, wonderfully nuts. He's not Joker nuts, but he is... <sighs> he thinks the world works. He's delusional. He's mildly delusional. He thinks the world works a certain way. You've met people like this in your life. And when the world doesn't work out that way, he tries to make it work out that way. Because he's Doom, he succeeds. And Doom is one of the only characters that, because Doom's motivation is to destroy Reed Richards and prove himself better than Reed Richards. That is his motivation. Um, that's why he becomes a supervillain. Uh, before he was a supervillain, he went from a gypsy to a college student to... He took over Latveria. He is not the, the natural king of Latveria. He wasn't that. So he becomes the ruler of the monarch, the iron-fisted ruler of Latveria. And... Is he looking at world conquest? Not really. Um, Doom is very... The delusions he has in his head aren't ma major delusions. He's mildly delusional, like I said. And because he's mildly delusional, he understands where he sits in the world. He just thinks that Reed Richards has caused all of his problems. So, I know I'm talking about Doom and not Sue. What else is going on with Sue? Uh, she's getting two videos, so I'm kind of, I think I covered most of everything. I wanted to talk about her relationship with her father, um, her relationship with her mom, and in my story, her two moms. She never knows her, her first mom. She knows Johnny's mom, who is also her mom. Um, like I said in the last video, I would have the Franklin Storm, I would have him remarry uh, after his first wife dies, adding to the tragedy so that when he snaps, because he hasn't when his second wife dies and he can't save her, he kind of breaks. And when he breaks, he gets into gambling. When he gets into gambling, he goes wickedly into debt. Um, I could even see kind of a, an ongoing theme of none of these people have money when they get together. Um, anyway. Oh, the Sue, Reed, and Ben. Like, I could see Sue living off of the college fund her parents put together for her and Johnny, that she's barely making it, she's got, the house was paid for, he was on the verge of um, maybe getting a mortgage, Franklin Storm, when the, uh, another mortgage, or selling the house or something, when the collection goon, the mobster loan shark comes to get him, and uh, and he kills the loan shark in, in a self-defense, and uh, goes to prison. What else is going on here? Yeah. So I could see Sue bear, having enough money to feed her and Johnny, but she knows after after college she's got to get work after college. Um she would probably have the most money out of all of them. Ben is there on a Ben is at that at that school on a Navy ROTC scholarship for the Marines, the men's department of the Navy. Um and Reed is there cuz it's a cheap school. I could see all of them going to this school because it's it's inexpensive. It's good school, but maybe it's a state school. Maybe it's a what do they do? They call it State U or Empire U in the comics. Doesn't matter. So yeah, um, Sue's broken. She's slowly dealing, accepting the fact she's moved on. She hasn't necessarily dealt with the wound from everything her father did to her, but she's functioning. She's functioning well. The, the straw that breaks the camel's back is getting those powers, and she leaves Reed, and something has to happen to draw them all together again after the accident. 
that's got to be the motivation of the first movie. And Sue is the one who's constantly going to be objecting. Wait, wait, wait. Let's find out what he wants. Why is he doing this? There's got to be a reason for it. Let's find out what the problem is, and we'll fix it. And then he won't be attacking us anymore. Whether it's Namor, or Namor, or however you pronounce that, or the Mole Man, or the Molecule Man, or Doom, or the Scrolls, or the Padoon, or... There's a litany of Fantastic Four villains. Um, yeah, so that's what I would do. That's part two of Sue. She is the passionate, um, not pacifist, but she's got that Hippocratic, Hippocratic, yeah, that's what I said, Hippocratic Oath. And she's always looking to do no harm whenever possible. She's looking for the, the peaceful solution, the way to not necessarily redeem the villain, but end their dispute, uh, fulfill, find a way to, to compromise, to get the job done. Um, kind of makes her the biggest hero in the group, really. So anyway, uh, yeah. With Sue, the two songs I have in my mind for Sue, one is, uh, um, All for One by, uh, Sting and sung by Rod Stewart, Sting and somebody else. It's off the Three Musketeers Disney movie there with um, Kiefer Sutherland and Oliver Platt and Chris O'Donnell. Anyway, the guy, Charlie, Charlie Harper from Two and a Half Men. He's got a real name and it's not coming to me. Oh, it's not meant as an insult. That's just my memory floofing around. Anyway, All for One is... Uh, when it's love you give, I'll be a man of good faith. When it's love you live, I won't bend, I won't break. I'll be the rock you can lean on. Build on? Build on. Be there when you're old, to have and to hold. So she watched, she only had a coat. She didn't have a lot of money growing up. So, well, she did at first, but then her dad dies, and now she's raising Johnny and everything. And they're living off old DVDs and VHS tapes. They don't have cable, but they're they're making they're getting by. And uh, that was a movie that she just watched a thousand times. She loves that song. And their song would be "Cool Writer" from Grease too. Um, it's a girl's song, but that's never stopped me before. Uh, it's uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, and she's singing. Uh, if you really wanna know what I want in a guy. I want a real, oh man, I want a real da 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 with hell in his eyes. I want a devil in skin tied leather. And that's how she sees Reed. Reed is, everybody gets Reed as a fuddy-duddy nerd. And they miss out on the fact that he was a secret agent, that he's a master of martial arts. He can outfight most people in the Marvel Universe without his powers. He's... Amazing. He's Mr. Fantastic. And sh that's how she always sees him. Even when he's nerding out, that's just part of the charm for her. She sees him as his, as her cool writer. So, there you go. I think that's everything. This has been an impromptu video. <laughs>